I wanted to make a recommendation for some Christmas music um, that I think people would enjoy. Um, I got to see a concert last week um, of a guy named Andrew Peterson, who's been around for a long time, and apparently for like 22 years or something, he's been doing this tour for an album he wrote called Behold the Lamb of God. And it's a really great um, kind of a theme album. And it takes you through all of the story of the Old Testament as it leads up to the Advent story. And um, it was just a really beautifully put together thing. And, and it kind of bridges the gap between maybe something like Handel's Messiah and the uh, zip lining drummer boys kind of stuff because it is a contemporary um, style of music but uh, he has a very uh, thoughtful approach and he's been influenced by a lot of the really good quality things that people um, enjoy and so it it um, has sort of an informal liturgical feel and um, it's somewhat difficult to see it in concert. He usually only does like 10 or 12 shows a year or something like that around the Christmas season. But I would say it's worth listening to and um, I'm going to link a playlist that has all the songs with some graphics and like the lyrics on the screens that he put out and it's one of those things that like if or if you had it on a record it would be worth sitting there and listening to it with headphones on and listening to all the lyrics because it really is uh, just a really beautiful telling of the of the christmas story from uh from the exodus onward and he incorporates some of the traditional Christmas music as like instrumentals in between some of the other songs, and and uh, it's really good musician musicianship, <laughs> really great playing, and um, he, he's a really interesting guy. So um, I um, I'd heard of him before because he's got his hands in a lot of other projects, and he's written books, and um, I watched a little interview and I wanted to just share a clip of that too because I think it was um, really good to just sh show where he came from and what his heart is and it's funny because it's similar to some of the stuff you would hear about from somebody like uh, Jonathan Peugeot but as a musician instead of a visual artist the things that um, you know turned his life around took him in a different direction um, brought him to a very different sort of form of Christianity. And that reflects what I had said uh, in my previous video where I was talking about the body and the many parts and the way I see it. I was referring it to almost as like these organs are like all these different denominations and traditions. And they all have a place in this body that is the invisible church, you know, the kingdom of God that is that is building and growing in ways that we can't always see or comprehend. But when we look at these little stories, you know, it stirs my heart up because I just see um, that I can relate to him and it relates to somebody very different, you know, uh, somebody who's in the Orthodox church or something like that. Um, even though one tradition may be a little more opposed to the imagery and the other is a little bit more opposed to the music, the heart and the spirit are the same. And um, it's a really great uh, thing to add to your Christmas season. I think it's probably going to be something that we'll try to incorporate um, in our regular kind of traditions going forward. So uh, check it out. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. And I was totally directionless. And, um, and part of the reason I was directionless was because I grew up, once again, in this Southern Christian paradigm where, you know, my mom would make these passive aggressive statements at the dinner table. Like, as I'm passing her the green beans, she would say, well, I just sure hope one of you kids goes into the ministry. You know, that kind of thing Ooh. where it's like, 
<sighs> and so, but the, the problem with that was that my dad, we, we saw how hard my dad worked and uh, the ministry is not an easy life. And I was also being told that all the things that I loved didn't really count in the ministry. So if you love Indiana Jones and the Goonies and Tom Petty and Skinner and comic books and novels with dragons, they're kind of like, well, that's nice, but the ministry is being a missionary or a pastor. So all those things that wake up your heart don't really matter. This, you know what I'm saying? Like I was being told those things were evil, you know, at worst or a waste of time at best. And so it wasn't until I never, it never crossed my mind to go in the ministry because it was a place that was bereft of everything that moved me. And so then after high school, when I encountered Rich Mullins' music first mm -hmm. and then Lord of the Rings and C.S. Lewis, and I began to see that, you know, the long shadow cast by the gospel over all of this art, you know? And so, um, I realized there is, in fact, a place in the kingdom for the left-handed oddball kid, the kid who likes to write fantasy novels or cares about nerds out about songwriting. You know what I'm saying? So it was a long time for me to learn that um, that uh, that I was there was a place for me. When did you story. feel like this gig could be permanent? I mean, I, this I could maybe do music. Yeah, I won't do the cover band through Wisconsin for the rest of my life. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. I could actually do well, this. Well, I, I landed in Bible college by accident um, because they didn't have a math requirement. <laughs> that was some serious. That was my that's main the reason. Whole, that's the sole that was reason I'm going. I was like, I don't want to do math. I've heard oh, less good. auspicious, but that's. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, my, I met my wife my freshman year, and my sophomore year we were married. Like, we just, I, it fit me like a glove. I loved it. It was like being at church camp for four years, paying somebody to make you read your Bible. Um, and so it, uh, I wrote most of the songs on my first record in Old Testament classes. You know, I was just sitting there in the, it like, uh, just enveloped by scripture all the time. And, uh, you know, I was antsy and I was still a college knucklehead, you know, but, uh, but at some point halfway through the college, my wife talked me into trying to do a concert. She was like, you should do, you should do this. You don't, you shouldn't just play in the background of the band. I think that you've got something to say. And. Um, she's pretty, so I believed her. <laughs> so I was by, by the time I finished Bible college, I had released an indie record, and I had enough mentors say, I think this is a gift. I think this is a calling. And it started with, uh, what we talked about vocation this week, um, as this, like, not just a career, but a calling from God. And that was, I remember hearing Rich Mullins' music, and it ch changed the whole game for me, because I, he was, well, talk about brokenness, his songs, he sounded hurt when he sang. And I'd never heard that in Christian music before. And he didn't have a great voice, and neither did I, and still don't really. And so it was easy to cover his songs, you know, in the beginning. I was like, okay, this gives me a picture of what I might be able to do. Right. And so I remember not long, and when I was 19, I publicly committed my life to the ministry in some way. And in my mind, what I basically told God was, if, if you can use me to make someone else feel about the gospel the way that this music and this art has made me feel, and that's what I want to do. I want to turn that around to you. So that's been kind of the recalibrating moment for me over the last 20 years or so. Is when it gets hard, I go, oh, that's right. I asked God if I could do this. You know.